India Eve Chip Chase was born on December 24, 1995, Christmas Eve, in Northampton, United Kingdom. Her parents were Suzanne and Jeremy Chip Chase, a highly respected physician. She had two younger sisters and a brother with whom she was very close. India studied at a renowned school called Pittsford and majored in health and social work at a continuing education college in Northampton. Her goal was to become a doctor like her father to help people. She worked as a waitress at a bar called the Calling Tree Pub, also located in Northampton. India loved to have parties on her birthday. Because it was on Christmas Eve, her family was always together. Like many young people, she liked to dress up in fashionable clothes, meet with friends, take pictures and go to parties. It is said that she liked to live life intensely. India was seen as a playful and good-hearted person who defended her family members tooth and nail. When she passed her driving test and finally got her driver's license, she joked that she would never have to take a bus again. As she was a very popular girl, she was always surrounded by friends, both male and female. Some of them she knew from her childhood. Due to her stunning looks, she stood out wherever she went. That's why she always attracted a lot of attention. She had a boyfriend named Ivan Rihanna, a professional rugby player. According to close people, the relationship between the two was very peaceful. On January 30, 2016, when India was 20 years old, she decided to go out to a nightclub with her friends. There they would have a few drinks as they always did. The nightclub they went had a rather strange policy. They offered drinks for one euro and invited you to what they called delirium. They asked if you had the courage to face it. But if you left the club and tried to enter again, the security guards would analyze if you were drunk or not. If they thought you were drunk, they would not allow you to enter. While India and her friends were inside the club, everything was going well. The night was flowing smoothly, India was having fun and dancing a lot. Only according to her friends, at a certain point the young woman had a sudden change of mood and started to be very sad and complain about her relationship. Shortly after that, she just disappeared. But her friends weren't worried. They thought she had gone home as she was upset, or else that she had met up with other friends. But in fact, India hadn't gone home, let alone found other friends. She was outside the club. She had gone to the staff at the entrance to the venue and said she wanted to go home. India then went out and tried to get a taxi. But when the taxi arrived, the driver noticed that she was a little drunk and asked her to pay in advance. He was afraid he would end up not getting paid for the ride. India felt very offended and refused to pay the tax in advance. She then tried to enter the club again, but because of their policy of not letting drunk people in, she was buried, having been denied to entry to the venue. India spent some time in front of the club, hoping to find someone she knew who could help her, all of which was recorded by security cameras as you can see in the video. She was using her cell phone trying to send or read a message. At that moment, a tall, bald man approaches her and they start talking. That man is Edward Tenniswood, a 52-year-old accountant. In the images you can see him talking to the young woman and gesturing as if he was trying to convince her of something. Later, the two leave the front of the club together and go towards a vehicle. Edward convinced India to take the taxi with him. From that point on, all we know is just the information that Edward passed on to the police, which may or may not be true. Edward said that when they were in the cab, he invited her over to his house for a few drinks. Supposedly she would have agreed, so he gave the taxi driver an address which was not his home address, but a nearby street. Edward did this because he didn't want the driver to know where his house was. Edward's house, which was about a mile from the club, was a bit bizarre. It was covered in plastics, even his computer was always wrapped. The curtains were all closed, the furniture was also covered. All of this, according to sources, was due to a cleaning mania that he had. It is also said that he used to wear latex gloves to avoid having to wash his hands because when he did it, he rubbed them so hard that they were full of sores. According to Edward's account, when they arrived at the apartment, they would have started drinking a few drinks and besides drinking, they also talked a lot, told jokes and had fun. At one point, India would have gone to the bathroom and he went to get two glasses of wine for them to drink. Upon returning from the bathroom, India would be a little more cheerful, so they would have sat on the floor and there they would have had a moment of affection in front of a mirror. It wasn't very clear but from what he said, it was as if the two were cuddling in front of the mirror. After that moment, 
they would have had intercourse and according to Edward, the young woman would have asked him to squeeze her neck during the intercourse. And he, in his eagerness to satisfy her, started to squeeze. But he didn't realize he was squeezing too hard and ended up taking her life. Then, upon realizing what he had done, he wrapped the young woman in plastic, put her in the bed, and left. And of course, wearing latex gloves during the whole thing. India's family was extremely worried, since a long time had passed and she had not been in contact, which was not like her. Suzanne, her mother, even published the following sentence on her social media. India Chip Chase, please let me know you're doing well, dear. Love you. The police began a search and by tracking the young woman's cell phone, they arrived at Edward's apartment. They managed to get inside after breaking down the door with a ramp. Her body was found around 3.30 p.m. on January 31st. Initially, the policeman who found her even shook her thinking she was just sleeping, but he soon realized that she was already dead. Her body was covered with a sheet and her hair was arranged around her head like a halo. At necropsy, 30 wounds were found on the body, most on the face, and the cause of death was asphyxia. Blood tests showed that the young woman had high levels of alcohol in her system. There was also blood on her fingernails, which indicated that she had fought for her life. Edward ended up being arrested a short time later. He was in a nearby hotel, calmly watching TV as if nothing had happened. He even used the computer to follow the news about India's disappearance. When the police arrived at the hotel, Edward said, I'm surprised you got here so quickly. It didn't take you long to find me. I think you went to my house and found what you were looking for. The police noticed several scratches on Edward's face and neck. This confirmed that indeed, India fought for her life. According to investigators, Edward is a lonely, meticulous person and has a distorted view of reality. He collected newspapers clippings of women who resembled his ex-girlfriends. Security cameras had already caught Edward in the same club two weeks before, on January 16th. He was wearing the same outfit and carrying a backpack, presumably in search of a victim. During Edward's arrest, the media reported that he had already been arrested for abuse and was released on bail. While in detention, three more women pressed charges against Edward, saying he abused them and tried to take their lives. During the trial, the accused claimed that his relationship with India was consensual and that everything happened because she wanted. He also said that he accidentally took her life because he was trying to satisfy her. The jury obviously didn't believe these allegations, and he was sentenced to life in prison. Edward will be eligible for parole after serving 30 years of his sentence. That will be when he is already over 80 years old. He reported that he lives suffering threats inside jail, and that he fears for his life. India's family said nothing that happened to this man will be enough to fill the void and ease the pain he caused them. More than 100 bouquets of flowers were left where India worked to honor her. Her funeral was in March 2016. She was cremated and her ashes were scattered at the sea. Alright folks, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching until the end. Best wishes, and I see you next time.